The 1935 stock is an EMU that was quite unique to the London Underground network. It was an experimental train that would later evolve into one of the longest serving trains on our network. The concept of the 1935 stock was born in 1933 when the LPTB, the London Passenger Transport Board, was formed. The LPTB brought together the underground lines and the bus services of the capital. The underground lines were the Baker Street and Waterloo Railway, the Great Northern Piccadilly and Brompton Railway, the Charing Cross, Euston and Hampstead Railway, the City and South London Railway, the Central London Railway, the District Railway, the Metropolitan Railway and the Great Northern and City Railway. These railways were grouped because it made large-scale planning much easier to do. This large-scale planning would culminate in the New Works programme, which had extensions to the Central and Northern lines. However, the extensions needed new rolling stock to be introduced. Older rolling stock had the equipment behind the cab, which was not ideal for peak travel. This equipment would take up one third of the train itself, so they decided to put the equipment underneath for the new rolling stock. The first three two-car sets were delivered in October and November of 1936 to Lily Bridge Depot, and they look quite different underground trains then and now. The units were painted red and the cabs were streamlined because it looked futuristic at the time. The trains entered service on the Piccadilly line on the 8th of April of 1937, but the stock did encounter some problems. The drivers hated the cabs, which had an armchair in the middle with the brake and master controller to the sides. Train evacuations would happen through the cab, which wouldn't be ideal for passengers trying to escape. One unit had a double glazed windows and the carriage was filled with filtered fresh air. This caused a problem when the system broke down because the carriage would get extremely hot very quickly. This also happened recently with the new Routemaster buses because the windows didn't open. There was also a problem with the futuristic streamlining. The streamlining would only work if the trains went over 80 miles per hour. Underground trains currently now don't even go above 60 miles an hour. However, there was another set. This one went out for trial along with the streamlined units and had a conventional flat front. This flat fronted set was greenlit and the streamlined units were put in storage just after World War II began. During the war, two of the streamlined units were sandbagged, placed in a pit and then were used as make-do air raid shelters. In 1949, the flat-fronted unit was modified to run as a two-car shuttle on the Epping to Ongar branch of the Central Line. In 1948, London Underground decided to do something with the streamlined 1935 stock. The 1935 stock was a prototype and the flat-fronted set would lay the groundwork for the 1938 stock. London Underground decided to remove the streamlining from the units and convert them all into trailer cars. The work began in early 1950 and they decided to rebuild the bodywork, remove the traction equipment and rewired all the electrics. By August 1950, all streamlined units were converted to look like 1938 stock trailers, but they did have minor differences. The converted units were moved to the newly extended central line from Loughton to Epping on the 25th of September 1949, but sometimes the stock would run from Woodford to Hainault, which had opened in late 1948. In 1954, the units were sent back to the Piccadilly line to serve the little-used shuttle from Holborn to Aldwych. While on this branch, one unit, car 11010, overran the station buffers on the 3rd of April 1955. The unit was damaged because of the impact of the buffers, but was rebuilt and looked more like a 1938 stock than the other 1935 stock sets. In early 1957, a unit was moved to Ealing Common Depot to test the regenerative braking. The test unit was returned to passenger service in May 1960 and went to the Epping to Ongar branch to join the other units that were moved there in November 1957. The 1935 stock units had a modified 1927 stock trailer for more passenger accommodation. However, the central line got 1962 stock units that weren't painted. The unpainted aluminium of the 1962 stock made the red of the 1935 stock look outdated. The units were repainted between August 1963 and May 1965 and had de-icing equipment fitted, but the end was near for the trains. The trains ran on the Epping to Ongar branch for two more years until they were withdrawn in 1966, after 29 years in passenger service. The units were replaced by 1962 stock, which ran on the shuttle until it closed in 1994. The 1935 stock was left in storage at Hainault Depot as London Underground thought of what to do with the trains. There was an idea that they would replace some 1938 stock units with some articulated 1935 stocks, and they tested the idea in May 1969. These plans got to the testing stage, but was reassessed when the Heathrow extension of the Piccadilly line was greenlit. They decided to drop the idea, and they decided to use 1972 stock trains that were similar to the 1962 stock on the Victoria line. With the idea dropped in early 1975, the 1935 stock was scrapped at Acton, with the remaining units at Rice that were officially scrapped on the 10th of October 1971, with none surviving into preservation.
Overall, the 1935 stock was a unique train, born out of the idea of going faster, but would culminate in the creation of the 1938 stock, a train that lasted 83 years on our national rail network. Thanks for watching this video, and thanks for watching the unique tale of the 1935 stock. They are pretty weird. But I'm not surprised they weren't put in service, because the streamlining only works at 80 miles an hour, when the underground trains only go 60. But anyways, I'll see you in the next one.